this might be a good place to kind of compare influenza, the flu, and COVID in the context of the discussion we just had, which is um, how deadly is COVID. So you mentioned COVID is a very particular kind of steepness uh, where the x-axis is age. Uh, so in that context, could you maybe compare influenza and COVID? Because a lot of people um, outside the folks who suggest that the, the lizards who run the world have completely fabricated and invented COVID outside of those folks, kind of the natural process by which you dismiss the threat of COVID is say, well, it's just like the flu. The flu is a very serious thing actually. Um, so in that comparison, where does COVID stand? Yeah, the flu is a very serious thing. It kills you know, 50, 60,000 people a year, something like that in that order, depending on the, the, the particular strain that goes around. Uh, that's in the United States. The primary difference to me are the, oh, there's lots of differences, but one of the most salient differences is the age gradient and mortality risk for the flu. So the flu is more deadly for ch two children than COVID is. There's no controversy about that. Children, thank God, have much less uh, severe reactions to COVID infection to, than they do to flu infections. And rate of fatalities and Rate stuff of fatality, like that. all of that. I think you mentioned, um... I mean, it's interesting to maybe also comment on, I think in another conversation you mentioned there's a U shape to the to the flu curve. So meaning like there's actually quite a large number of kids that die from flu. Yeah, I mean the 1918 flu, the H1N1 flu, that, that the Spanish flu in the US killed millions of, 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 uh, of younger people. And um, that is not the case with COVID. More than, um, I'm gonna get the number wrong, but something like 70, 80% of the deaths are people over the age of 60. Well, we've been talking about the fear the whole time, really. But my interaction with folks, now I wanna have a family, I wanna have kids, but I don't have that real firsthand experience. But my interaction with folks is at the core of fear that folks had is for their children. Like that, S somehow, you know, I don't want to get infected because of the kids, like, because God forbid something happens to the kids. And I think that uh, obviously that makes a lot of sense. This kind of the kids come first, no matter what, that's the number one priority. But in, for this particular virus, that reasoning was um, not grounded in data, it seems like, or that emotion and feeling. Yeah, it was not grounded. It wasn't. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it, this is way more deadly than the flu, just overall, and especially to older people. Yes. Right. So the numbers, when when the story is all said and done, COVID it would would take many more lives. Yeah. So I mean, point two is sounds like a small number, but it's not a small number worldwide. Yeah. What do you think that number will be? By the you know let's not let's not like make but would we cross I think it's in the United States it's um, the way the deaths are currently reported like eight hundred thousand something like that do you think we'll cross a million seems likely yeah do you think it's something that might continue with different variants what uh, well I I think um so we can talk about the end state of COVID the end state of COVID is it's here forever um I, I think that there is good evidence of immunity after infection, such that you're protected both against reinfection and also against severe disease upon reinfection. So the second time you get it, it's not true for everyone, but for many people, the second time you get it will be milder, much milder than the first time you get it. With the long tail, like uh, that lasts for a long time. Yeah, so just there are studies that uh, the follow course of people who are infected for a year, and the reinfection rate is something like somewhere between 0.3 and 1%. Yeah. Um, and uh, like a pretty fantastic study out of Italy found that. Uh, there's the one in Sweden, I think. There's a few, few studies that found the similar, similar things. Um, and the reinfections t tend to produce much milder disease, much, much less likely to end up in the hospital, much less likely to die. Um, so what the end state of COVID is, it's circulating the population forever and you get it multiple times. Yeah. And, and then there's... I think studies and discussions like the the best protection would be to get it and then also to get vaccinated. And then a lot of people push back against that. 
for the obvious reasons from both sides because somehow this the, the discourse has become less scientific and more political. Well, I, th I think you want to, like, the first time you meet it is going to be the most deadly for you. Right. And so the first time you meet it, it's just wise to be vaccinated. The vaccine reduces severe disease. 